for us, the People's Forum, it's quite important to know it's our response, it's our internationalist agenda, the topic of solidarity and independence of Puerto Rico, understanding that there is no country in our continent that can call free without the freedom of our sister nation, our sister island, Puerto Rico. So it's our great pleasure to have our Senator Maria Lourdes Santiago Negron, which is Vice President of the Independent Party of Puerto Rico, and our brother Manuel Melendez of the Frente Independence Boricua. They're talking with us about the perspectives of the, the political uh, the landscape that's happening right now in Puerto Rico and the independence movement in the island. So we are happy of their presence. We'll be doing this conversation, having this conversation a bit as a, present, a presentation, as a present info and then a talk. Our colleagues are gonna present something 15 minutes each and then we'll enter a Q and A session. So I ask everyone that are listening or watching us to write your comments, questions, and the different platforms. If you're writing, if you're seeing this through YouTube, please write it there. If you're seeing this through Zoom, you could see it. You could uh, write something there, there too. But just get involved in the conversation that we're going to have. That's the whole point of this. So, without any, uh, uh, any more, well, the Maria de Santiago Negron to be able to share a bit about her analysis and her perspective. Welcome, Maria. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, People's Forum, that you've uh, hosted us in the past. The last time we were there during the UN, thank Jocelyn Velasquez that uh, helped in that coordination. Uh, and, and of course, Manolo, that's always a pleasure to, to spend time with him, discussion, this, this fight for independence. So when we received this invitation from y'all, we you asked as many questions, and I want to start by the last one. What can be done from the diaspora, the Puerto Rican, Latin American diaspora, or from the solidarity of the U.S. public as it relates to the liberation of Puerto Rico? And I highlight this because I really believe that we failed it to concentrate too much the political message, uh, you know, like to the Congress. To the, and I think it's important that the fight against the, our Puerto Rican colonialism be also be transmitted to all the, the, the people of the United States. And that way that people become aware that it should be an embarrassment, an authentic embarrassment now that we're in the 21st century, that there is a nation, a country like Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico subjugated by the imperial hold of the United States. Puerto Rico ha has passed on to be a historic uh, uh, colony to uh, a, a dictatorship, be a, a fiscal dictatorship. This through the this current law of Promesa in 2016, we don't even, there's not even a determinist of, uh, capability through our elected officials because it's all controlled by the, the fiscal department that has veto powers of the legislation in Puerto Rico, which have also a last word of each cent of the public treasury of Puerto Rico. This type of control on top of the colonial framework is mentioned again in all it's in the loud and clear a dictatorship. And that is what's happening in Puerto Rico. And secondly, it's important that the whole American public and people, uh, United States uh, people know that it's a responsibility of that country to have a mechanism that helps the Puerto, Puerto Rican people find the way out of this colonial entrapment. Living in a colony is, it's like the, 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 the uh, like a syndrome, Stockholm syndrome that you could see that, you know, you're stuck in a, in a location without having the ability to leave. But what, without there's a, a, a 
process, me mechanism processes to get out of this, it'd be very difficult that Puerto Rico can advance in those proposals to continue the, in its relationship and to find its relationship with the United States. And also lastly, it's really important to communicate that the solution, the most satisfactory solution of the current colonial situation for the United States and Puerto Rico alike is that the Puerto Rican people can one day enjoy our full uh, sovereignty. At this moment in history, it's it's equally hard or, or challenging this, this uh, national uh, identity as uh, as an item, Puerto, us Puerto Ricans, we don't want to be United States uh, people or, or citizens. Uh, we are nationals in our own land. So when 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 we can take our own, determine our own outcome, of course, from an, a, an harmonious and respectful manner to the United States that give us important links. For example, now more than half of our compatriots live in the United States, but until this is a relationship of equals, there won't be a, a, a plenary, a, a good sense of political relations between the United States and Puerto Rico. So that being said, what's the current state of the independence movement uh, in Puerto Rico? I know the last few years, we've advanced very quickly more that we've seen in past decades in good measure. This is because the United States has decided to, to take off this, this friendly uh, controller uh, measure that it had and represent itself as the true colonial power that it, it is. This has contributed a lot to, to know the level of promise, this, the, the promise of stature that, that led that established and also a, a, a jurisprudence where the Supreme Court of the United States ratified that the Puerto Rican people under that political structure of free and liberated state, we don't have nor have a, a, a sov any sovereignty. That's what was decided. The, the US Federation is, is sovereign the, the states are sovereign, the original people, the original nations are sovereign, but not a colony like the United States. So with that judicial backing of PROMESA that led to this imposition of this uh, fiscal control. So during the debate that we've been having in the last few years to try to establish a mechanism to make sure that there's not the, the bankruptcy of the country, we these different these items have been ratified of uh, political inferiority of Puerto Rico. This idea of, of bankruptcy, which is one of the most uh, stressing items in Puerto Rico, we have a, a main a, a, a huge debt, hundreds of billions of dollars. The governor of Puerto Rico. The government of, of Puerto Rico is not even part of the, 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 the tribunal. It's like if we were small kids, we don't have the ability to come before the court. What controls us is the this uh, fiscal uh, court control. So within this complexity of, of po po politics, of dialectics, it has led to the different sectors of the Puerto Rican community that were very uh, reticent to understand the, the dimension of the colonial history because they've of the, because of the advancement of this colonial same colonial system as i mentioned i'm a senator i am a spokesperson of the independent uh, party in the senate of puerto rico in the last few weeks we've been receiving their different groups that that don't have a, a link or connection with others. We've received uh, university workers that this that that, that that certain measures doesn't allow for people to make to reach a certain agreement. Also, the students they are are not happy with the cuts by made by 
but it cuts for the university. Also, we meet, met firefighters that that are suffering also from this this fiscal control, and also as as well with different uh, salary limitations tied to this. We also re met transportation workers, uh, drivers, because of the because of their there has there's possible restrictions that doesn't allow a just market. So there's there's sectors that are don't have a clear tie, but they have the same issue and they, they articulate it very clearly that this they're against this this fiscal control and it let them to understand a, a level of awareness that they they before couldn't under, uh, get of the political uh, conditions of, of Puerto Rico to the reality that we have now of the independent movement, it quadrupled its votes in relation to in comparison to its mechanism in 2016. And uh, me as a senator and representative, we are the legislator, legislators, legislators that we received the most votes in the Senate. We received two uh, legislators from Victoria Ciudadana, which has certain affinities as us with the Proyecto Dignidad. This breaking of this bipartisanship has led to the country receive a new fresh uh, breath air and has given to a, a new it, this type, of, also by supporting uh, this understanding of the support that received during the Hurricane Maria and also the earthquakes last year and now with the pandemic. When this is tied to the experiences of the summer before the, in 2019, when the country was went in outrage and protest and which finally they achieved that the governor at that time, Governor Ricardo Rosario, he resigned. He his, his, he resigned uh, amidst scandalous uh, events. This all led uh, a sense of possibility in the country that didn't happen or wasn't there in the past. We've seen we've seen it, the disposition to be heard, and this all gives a new scenario to break free of colonialization, in which we are channelizing now in the local legislature in Puerto Rico through a petition that, that leads to specific uh, com committees in the House and the Congress and the Senate to, and in relation to the Congress of the United States that, that was ratified last year, uh, Nidia Gutierrez and Alexandro Casio Cris, that make a similar peti a petition, and this measure will be later be ratified next week. We suggested some amendments we consider important, but we think that it will give, give us a fundamental contribution so that the item of, of status can be talked about in the United States. So I think all this led my time. I want to make sure Manuel. Has a, has a moment to speak and later for Q&A. Thanks so much, Maria de Lourdes. I think you really paint a good picture of the context in Puerto Rico and is in a, of the, the fight for independence. So thank you for that analysis and perspective. Now I'm gonna give the, the word to Manuel Melendez, who is part of the Frente Independentista Baricua. Thank you for that invitation. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you for your for your for your invitation of the People's Forum. And I also thank Jocelyn Velasquez to facilitate this participation for at night during this panel. So I'm happy to be here and to be with my colleague Maria de Lourdes. As she mentioned, this, she's a legislator that has the most votes in the Puerto Rican Senate at this moment, which with a clear mandate, which is the, the, the leadership that she's been able to gain in our country. We are, we're at a juncture that is very important 
of the decolonization and also independence of Puerto Rico, utilizing a bit of the framework that uh, that you the, the questions that you 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 sent to us the of 2019 during the, the summer of uh, that fight during 2019 that wasn't would have been possible without the accumulation of of past struggles it's certainly the imposition of a dictatorial uh, group uh, imposed by Wall Street the Congress and the U.S. Uh, the president in 2016 led to to traumatize a, an issue which is the colonialization in our country. Puerto Rico, though, st still goes through is still still going through an economic crisis. At, in 2016, and from there, there's a series of struggles of uh, working class uh, communities, different sectors of the of the people, as Maria de Lourdes mentioned, at this moment, the reality is is very un easy to understand the contradiction between a Puerto Rico, a colonial Puerto Rico, this myth of of of, of Puerto Rico as the window of the of the, the Caribbean is broken. We are because our people and are aware that Puerto Rico is a colony and that's a big step in relation to the, to the feeling uh, or the, the common awareness a few years ago. As I mentioned, the, 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 the working of struggle to take out the Ricky Rosselló, what would have been made possible without the, uh, accumulating the, the knowledge of, uh, a fight, especially first of May 2017, because certain promises were not met, where U.S. where excuse, students of the University of Puerto Rico and uh, public education, they uh, those groups, along with progressive working class groups, that are that are working towards the working class conditions as, as well the, the traumatic experience of the abandonment of the, the country in a critical moment during Hurricane Maria. In particular, our people amongst other things became aware themselves and be, be, uh, discovered fight, uh, discover strength to fight about regarding this governmental abandonment and from there led to an awakening of a national affirmation at, at that time at, during Hurricane Maria it was never seen so many Puerto Rican uh, Puerto Rican flags flying anywhere in our country and outside and that's something that the country was able to get some of their nationality and pushed forward the, this was such a great uh, awakening of consciousness, where in 2019, with it was covering the, the miserable chat on how the governors were the were making fun of our country, our people took all that indignation and and and, and feelings to achieve something without uh, without being seen before a multi-day. Uh, people expressions to take out a government, a government that had many, many ex ex expressions of uh, a cultural, artistic expressions of, of protest, you know, street combat, everything happened where the people were able to have the taste of victory, of, of defeating a government. And this is just to say in a few words, this is, this is not just something that, uh, uh, something flippant, this is something very important to, to the consciousness of a people uh, and the consciousness, uh, a national consciousness. And, and the, during these days in 2019, led us to, uh, to tie different things of experiences in, in Puerto Rico and out 
the the the, the Puerto Rican diaspora, the those those in exile, gave a great lesson of solidarity with our country. And part of that solidarity that goes beyond the national uh, Caribbean border. That being said, our country has uh, upon itself a very particular moment from 2019, we have the experience, uh, this organizing experience that led to happening in many aspects and uh, sectors of our, com of our community. And I, what I mean by different organizing aspects that the people was able to discover out of Maria that they have to organize because here we can't wait that for a foreign government is the one that controls our our situation as a country. Our fight of this, the control, fiscal control is, is one of our uh, priorities of, of our country. And it doesn't happen in a vacuum. The, the growth of electoral growth of the independence uh, party is a product of it's it's a coordinated and organized effort very articulated effort for this struggle the independence movement or uh, puerto rico it brings me great pleasure to say is not just to come to electoral this electoral position but that for many years it led to many con constructing many relationships of the left and independence movement of that same left, which led to a fruitful result. The openness space of dialogue, openness space of coordination and of work among within many fronts for the many fronts of this uh, of social struggle, struggle from an international perspective, but also from an electoral perspective. And that's something that's Boy, that's our greatest challenge right now, that Puerto Rico has the possibility to work towards independence. We have a government, we have a colonial government that has a, a skewed mandate, a very a thin mandate of, uh, uh, that, that doesn't have control of the House or the Senate and that more possibly will try to, by, by, to rule by decree, there is a, it's, uh, a government that's subservient to uh, ex foreign uh, uh, finances, as well tied to this uh, fiscal control, which are tied to inter foreign interests and not, not national interests. So that contradiction of, uh, of this national contradiction of colony empire is in the point of rupture, but that rupture requires organization from us requires coordination from us. And what I mean, us, I'm talking about the, the movement, the revolutionary independent movement of Puerto Rico requires to deepen the work of, of struggle, of, 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 of a organized struggle. There is dialogue, there is hope and communication amongst different sectors, which great, brings us great joy, but we understand that this is a time to work from a political edu political education for our people and also uh, understanding new types of organizational ways but also action and coordination the diaspora those in exile the the, the boricuas outside of the national uh, borders have their, its own historic weight of struggle in the united states in particular, the city of New York, where the Boricuas since the 40s and 50s have acted in defense of the, for the independent uh, struggle. They've expressed themselves in New York, they expressed themselves in Congress, Rodito Lebron, Evi Flores, Cordero, and Oscar Collazo. And yeah, that signal of, uh, of awakening of Boricua was held by them, but also in the 60s and 70s, organizing experience of the Socialist Puerto Rican Party, the Young Lord, the Young Lords, the, uh, the group in Chicago, the movement of uh, independent of national 
the the committee all these expressions of organizing of the 60s 70s and 80s gave experiences uh, toward the current work and i'm happy to represent the frente independentista boricua that is an organization it's a organizational front where the committee of new york participates the part the nationalist party in new york, new york el grito in new york we have colleagues and macheteros that are part of the front as well the group of Puerto Ricans in Minnesota, there's a dialogue, there's a conversation and a work, an activist work of our Boricuas in the, uh, in the exterior. And these uh, networks are being tied and of these social organizations, which are very fundamental. I believe it's important to give a lot of emphasis on strategic thinking, strategic thought, to to work uh, towards victory many times at least a critique for us is that it's there's an activism the of looking to a juncture of the moment without seeing the strategic vision or it was also a sin to think that independence will be some the people that reach independence are the people that's not for us, we'll, for us to struggle. So we have to break that dichotomy. We have, to, we have to think that we have the ability to reach independence in a very short time, five, 10 years. There's a possibility that Puerto Rico can achieve its independence and it'll be a combination of different of struggle that include the parliamentary perspective, but also organizing in the streets of all the leaders. And with that, that's my presentation until now. Thank you so much, Manuel. That was a very complete answer. I think it's very important that we do a self-reflection, a self-criticism, and also thank you for sharing that and for sharing how we start a pathway to articulate our um, information, our political education, which is really important to advance to advance the struggle. So I'm getting questions and I'm gonna start sharing them and we're gonna start to uh, talk about them. So I have a question about what, what programs does the PEEP follow from the uh, electoral process? So our, Party is one with with bringing uh, social and and I think with time we've been able to mature in our vision and understanding that our our fight against uh, uh, colonial oppression has to be against all all forms of oppression, racism, patriarchy, against the economic privileges that are represented specifically in our context by the imposition of the fiscal board across the, the concession of privileges uh, so that is manifested in, in the privatization that is, that, that it is, it, always come to a failure when it's practiced and right now with the privatization of the electric grid system we are we are uh entering to to privatize our electric grid and we are inserting ourselves into to to work towards the independence of puerto rico very clear thank thank you so there's a question via YouTube. Um, can you speak more about what would be reparations for Puerto Rico if there are conversations about that? And what vision do you all have about reparations after years of colonialism? And the question is for both. 
Manuel, it's your turn. Well, first of all, the, to talk about reparations in Puerto Rico is, is a country that has experienced military intervention, economic intervention over 150 years that has been exploited. We know of a of a of a comrade who who we talk to a lot um, to orient us on this on this topic, Neftali Garcia, who who talks about the uh, debt from a perspective of imperialism. Right now, we talk about the debt that we're we're talking about the the financiers of in Wall Street, and that's something that has been, that, uh, the debt is something that's been created with the intention of collapsing Puerto, Rica, Puerto Rico's economic system to be able to share this with bondholders who um, control the financial wealth. So we want the debt to be audited because it's illegal. The debt belongs to the empire. It, in, in the same way that the extraction of all the uh, financial gains across um, the years of uh, imperial exploitation is surpasses $800 million, and these are numbers that, that Neftali Garcia has used. Uh, so the, the empire has benefited from our country, and we hold that in, in the process uh, of uh, in the process of a pathway to independence, it should be reparations for uh, for damages and and repairs, so that the uh, international bodies can can really have a pathway to decolonization but for us it's more important to have uh, independence and that's that's a people struggle because that will be through the people and that they're the ones who we're the ones who are going to be able to create that that political power of political consensus so that we we can make the yankees answer to our call for independence and and repair of 500 years of colonialism and we believe that we can do that with the people movement and i would like to add to what manuel is saying in in context to the debt because there have been different different claims but we we believe that it's important that the that there is an, a political audit because the country needs to know who are responsible of that because this is where the ties are to the colonial system because the reason why puerto rico was able to fall into debt was because of the projection of uh, bonds of uh, puerto rican bonds as an exempt as of um as a uh, basically a, a way to be able to hold Puerto Rico that knowingly the end was going to be what Puerto Rico is experiencing currently. Yes, the topic of the debt is very important to look at in all dimensions, but it's not going to be solved in a single way unless it's negotiated in, in a political way because the jurisdiction is especially what, what is happening through Romesa, which is and which is resulting in the legalization of a scheme that is unsustainable. That debt and that repair and that repayment that the tribunal is saying, we are not gonna be able to uphold because if, and then if it continues through that same path, where this is going to end up is going to lead us to a second economic fall. It's not just it's not just an economic problem. It's a political one. It's a colonial one. Thank you. And yes, it's a colonial debt, 
it uh, that, that it does not belong to the island nor to the peoples of Puerto Rico. So thank you for that answer for leading it that way. And this is this is the question regarding what happened on January 6th and what would be the implications from that uh from that act we know that internally domestically there have been developments of being able to uh, pass anti-terrorism laws and even that process has even impacted cuba because cuba is now on the list of a countries who uh, are suspicious of terrorism so we would like to know what would be uh the perspective from puerto rico if there are any well i would i would think that that the act of terrorism from the alt right on january 6 especially for the movement pro state in puerto rico is actually is actually adding fuel there is a, a right wing there is a right wing political development in in regards or in regards of the capital development but also in question in regards to the national aspect of it the united states and its racist tendencies that is rooted not only not just with the 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 change in government or the exit of Donald Trump can we just think that it's gone we have to remember that uh, white supremacists there is a larger movement and it's um on the path of fascism so we, it, it, so Puerto Rico and and Puerto Ricans in the United States form a history of resistance of 150 years of colonialism, and we've done it uh, a myriad of different methods. And all, the simple fact of being in resistance, we are, uh, we are in. We are a part of of that combat. So I I, I think that uh, Boricuas in in the United States have been mobilizing and organizing and being able to impact public opinion and the messaging for Puerto Rican independence. So independently from different restrictions that we've experienced ourselves in this country where our our people have experienced massacres uh, particularly the massacre of Ponce in in, in the incarceration of movement blocks i i think that there's a movement that is going towards the right but our our country is moving towards the left and towards independence thank you and we have another similar question and the question is what is the impact of president biden's uh President Biden, in, in regards to advancing the independence of Puerto Rico, of Puerto Rico, I think that people are just very hopeful of the Democratic Party, and 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 they point to the to the to the political victory of of Kamala Harris, but both are part of the establishment of the Democratic establishment of the United States. He, this is this is what this is the legacy of Obama. The difference here, the fundamental difference between the Democratic Party and the Republic, is that some eat with a fork and some eat with a knife. So the Democrats haven't really represented that episode of, of January. That to me is almost like a metaphor, like an allegory. Like if someone 
wanted to do performance of what the fall of the United States is, but certainly the Democrats haven't behaved themselves decently with the Puerto Rican people. And I think that we have to be alert to what, what the vision of progressive blocks are painting that start to to paint this vision that the that the best that they have to offer to Puerto Ricans is statehood and perhaps people can 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 feel like a, a, a good intention gesture but for the 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 annexation of uh, Puerto Rico to the United States is the last stage of colonialism. So this is almost a, a racist act because it almost seems that they want us, they want the people to believe that that the best that can happen to Puerto Rico is an annexation, and that's in and of itself a racist thought. So I, with with Biden's arrival, we are creating the circumstances and and in the wider context to push the to push the topic of Puerto Rican status gives us the opportunity to present the theme in Congress for the next and upcoming years. Would you like to add something, Manuel? I, I I agree with I agree with what Maria de Lourdes is stating. We definitely do support to the importance of our people inside and outside of the national territory because the process of them hearing us out is going to really have have is going to have to come from organization and 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 political fights because we have to look at the different efforts that we are trying to push forward for example the proposal from Congresswoman Cortez about the status of Puerto Rico is going to be different ways to uh, uh, test Biden's Congress, but it's not going to be the last and only way to be able to reach independence because in the in this last instance, we have to remember that this Congress is the Congress of the Empire. So we have to be able to get the empire to agree to a hegemonic process of the people. We need to build towards solidarity and the sectors that are more progressive, that are identified with the anti-colonial struggles and with the and with social justice, like like what happened with uh, the the Vietnamese people and and the and the people who convinced the people from from the colonized countries that we needed to push for a different status quo and we need to focus our work in solidarity in solidarity to push this forward thank you very much manuel maria de lourdes uh, we have a question that is very wide but we, we can we can we can try and address as much as we can from this question and the question is what is the the political and legal strategy to this is the fiscal control board uh, what what is that strategy to to get rid of the full control board? Well, I think to start off, uh, all political spaces should be confrontational, uh, despite how 
how viable uh, a result may be or not. Um, so for example, in the independent independent party, we they they're they're bleeding us out that are stealing the wealth of of the people that that is that is living there's like uh organizations of lawyers and and, and accountants who are living off of us and we have to position ourselves politically and it, we think that it's very important to uh, to be able to point to what Manuel is saying, the political work, not only from the electoral perspective, but in all possible civic organization, there needs to be conscious created inside uh, United States of how 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 crude this reality is, and and. And also, it's very it, it, indisposable. We use this, this term in, in 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 the streets and in the ballot box because we are able to. We have to remember that the 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 work in the streets has to be fundamental. Like I was explaining. All of those are all of the things that are part of or looking into this liberated and associated state. In this system, it's called a, a free and liberated state. It could be one thing today, and tomorrow could be another thing. Promesa could be one today, and tomorrow will be another stature. So the fundamental problem will be to find this the procedural method to leave the colonial perspective. That part from the Independence Movement Party, it is a assembly. Uh, type of a status where many people part of can come and make the petition to the US Congress to give a procedural mechanism where we can pick different options and those options can be negotiated. In Puerto Rico, there are many people in the culture of dependency believe that the option, the best option for the, the, for the for the country is is statehood, but we know United States is not going to give statehood to Puerto Rico. We are incompatible with the political structure of the United States. But I could say from the political uh, party, from my part, I could say that. But the, the, the Congress needs to tell that to the American, the United States people. That way, the next step is to to take away this myth of statehood as Don Pedro Aviso Campo called the, the supreme definition, that is the question, the Yankees or Puerto Rico? Manuel, would you like to say something? To take out the board, as a, the central point of this conversation, is this uh, the colonial, uh, this imperial, colonialist imperialist and the board is tied to that and is mentioned as uh, Maria Lourdes mentioned this board is something that is imposed by the Congress but it also has this uh, judicial board part of the, the law of promesa which is tied uh, or tied to the interest of uh, foreign interests not of Puerto Rico's what happens is every day our people are becoming aware of that contradiction and our people can 
elect uh, politicians that won't be able to uh, won't be able to put against this uh, dictatorial board, and this this dictatorial board is about to start to start to put more heavy measures in our country that it's going to create much more precariousness where where the relationship of workers uh, precariousness in schools precariousness in health precariousness in in salaries so while that happens as i mentioned before the capacity that the people have to just get fed up and say no more is it's palpable it's palatable you can you could taste it and th so then therefore in organizational power in more organizational efforts there'll be greater power that will break these uh, colonial colonialist ties and the, of course there will be levels of agreements with the constitutional uh, assembly but there has to be fight there has to be a uh, struggle from the people and the fiscal board is is tied in the middle of that struggle and it's pushing us to a path that we must go down thank you again the responses are these answers are very clear and precise i have the last question is if you can go a little deeper into this uh, character, anti-imperialist uh, character, an anti-racist character that, that the Independence Party of uh, Puerto Rico has. I know it's a big thing, but you know, share what you what you can. The independence uh, movement created in Puerto Rico first uh, from the wanting to push away from the the Spanish empire and then the US one. So I believe that we can't become independent because we have a very calculated effort on how imports and exports are gonna be when Puerto Rico is independent uh, with dollars and cents, how are we gonna resolve the issue about the debt? I think that we are, independent like fighting for independence become a visceral from a visceral moment we reject colonialism and the notion that there are countries that are superior than others and therefore that have the right to dominate them so that instinct it was it pushes us in other efforts the fights against racism fight for the protection of of natural resources. It's United States has in Puerto Rico, there's a big tie with a link of the most the most poor. As you can know in Puerto Rico, we're fighting against the the carbon uh, carbon production and ashes it, produ it produces. So that's an environmental fight, but also a community fight and struggle. So I think in this longer tie of independence uh, is a re it's a reaction uh, or yeah reaction to all those uh, oppressive mechanisms and yeah to expand a little bit more the the movement the Puerto Rican independence movement is. It moves a lot with uh, a lot of social justice, social justice that that is, that works against the oppression of, of gender, against the explo exploitation, oppression of labor, against the exploitation of of natural resources. All of these things, our movement is present not in an opportunist way, but to uh, from a way uh, how we want to see the country, a social justice vision of men and women, human beings 
with the same opportunities for everyone to to develop whatever they may be and where social justice is the norm so in that sense all those fights of the social sectors we accompany them historically and we continue and we will continue to do so because those will be part of the the struggle of our independence once we achieve it it's a dialogue. thank you if there's something if find words that you want to say while we close i'm going to give the mic to manuel de lourdes manuel if there's something that you left out that you want to share with the people you have the space to say now yeah again to give a big thanks to organize this forum for those that are accompanying us. We've had to go through a lot of time of, had to go through a time of, of deep hope. Our movement has been fed by the sacrifices of men and of extraordinary men and women. If the fight that we were, were that we're fighting similarly to the Pueblo Sarawi, the people of Sarawi and the Palestine community, it's been illuminated by people that that have led to this struggle before. We we want to give or highlight those that that did this before, and also we want to take advantage or uh, to notice that the system is ready to break. The system is at its in Puerto Rico, under the U.S. control and dominance, the mind, the time of the invasion, through the law 600, and now with Promesa and the fiscal board control, these things are key for the colonial evolution of Puerto Rico. So I think we have the a, a tremendous responsibility, and I think it's important to rise to it with joy because when you when one has that that ability to fight for for liberation and has the desire to fight for what's uh, for equality and all its manifestations one has to be blessed and within that spirit continue that solidarity work each person from where they're at we represent different organizations different visions different uh, ways but here where Puerto Rico is governed by the Puerto Rican people. I want to share that optimism, the optimism that was always characterizes us, but also an objective uh, optimism in this historic moment that we live in. The Puerto Rican independence movement is at a moment that's in a process of many of much outreach of dialogue of a lot of positive attitude to coordinate efforts and work of course respecting differences and ways of struggle and i share this from an optimistic perspective to those listening and also an invitation to continue in this process as i mentioned before it's important to work a lot in the strategic thinking, the strategic uh, management of strategic management of specific junctures. It's the, the current, the, the moment, the breaking point of the colony is very fragile. We don't know where another one, another uh, juncture will appear of the, like the summer of 2019. But what I want to say is that when that moment comes, it's going to find an independence movement with the capacity to to meet the fight of the people and give it greater direction in favor of the decolonization and independence. And there's many fronts. So there's the international front. There's a solidarity front of organizations in the United States and abroad, as well as an organizational level in different areas in our country. Uh, the optimism is with our will of a victory, which will give us a new Puerto Rico and a, a new 
state. Thank you, Maria de Lourdes, Manuel, to share with us. You gave us a list, list of tasks to do in our solidarity, for solidarity groups inside and outside of the island. For us, it's important to articulate the unity uh, to be based in principles as well. And thus we believe that the conviction and the fight for the independence of Puerto Rico is tied to the dignity of all the peoples, not just Puerto Rico. So we, uh, we are committed to advance the work of formation, uh, political education, to be able to reaffirm and uplift this radical legacy that many of the, organ of the organizations that you mentioned have in the diaspora, for example, and also to connect us with the different uh, groups and networks that are working towards the independence of Puerto Rico. And I loved that I was able to share, uplift the spirit of Pedro Aviso Campo in this space, because for us, it's a horizon that we can learn a lot or Yankees or Puerto Ricans, because for real, that is where it's at. And I think the question of Manuel, how are we going to go above this relation of empire and colony. So again, thank you very much. I want to thank everyone, uh, Jocelyn Velasquez that helped us in the coordination. I wanna give thanks to everyone that shared their questions. There were many that were shared and there are some, those that weren't answered because again, there was a lot shared in the chat and YouTube is the long run. So there will be a long uh, journey to take and I hope and look forward that we can move towards this uh, independent of what our North is, but the North is the independence of Puerto Rico. So thank you everyone. Thank you, have a good night.